All right, we're, we're live. We're live. We're live. We did it. We're live. Hello, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday night for me. Don't know what time it is for you or what day it is, but thank you for joining me on this live stream talking about three things I love about these kitchens and one things I hate. Hate's a strong word, but you know, whatever. So we're going to look at some of these things in some of these kitchens. I want to remind you that as you're looking at these kitchens, no matter how fabulous these things seem to be uh, when we're looking at them or how elaborate some of these kitchens are, that um, you can always take away the key points. So the key point isn't the fact that it's a great big elaborate kitchen, but that there is a particular thing that you can implement into your kitchen. So we want to look at these tonight and hopefully you will enjoy this as we get into it. So let's look at the first kitchen. And uh, this is kind of a game like they used to play on Sesame Street. Three of these things belong together and one of these things doesn't belong here. So now it's time to play our game. So this is the first kitchen. I have 10 of these kitchens we're going to look at. And what I wanted to do or what I did is I typed in Google image search functional kitchen. And I just went through, you know, I just picked 10 kind of random. And I actually had a challenging time uh, with all of these to find something I didn't really like about them. There's some, some are a little bit easier than other. In fact, there's one of these kitchens that's three things I don't like. And one thing that I do like, in fact, that one kitchen has multiple things I didn't like. But anyway, for most of these kitchens, it was hard to actually find something. But I wanted to really search for something that we could, uh, you know, dive in to say, hey, these are things you should implement into your kitchen. And then this is something that maybe you should think twice about. Or maybe you you love it and you don't want to think twice about it. You just want to go ahead and do it. But it'll give you uh, an opportunity to... Um, play along with us, with me, as we look at some of these kitchens to see what, what do you like about these and what do you not like? So this, here's the first kitchen. We'll break these down as we go, but take a, a whole, you know, a look at this for a few minutes for a second and uh, just get an idea yourself. First impressions. Do you like this kitchen? Do you not like this kitchen? Is it your vibe? Is it not your vibe? Um, these are all important things to know when you're planning your own kitchen to know what you don't like and what you do like. And uh, as you do jump on, make sure you hit the like button and um, say hi in the chat. All right. First thing that I love about this kitchen is the little arched toe kick detail. Now, this is something that is extra that you uh, don't see every day. In fact, it's only on the sink base of this kitchen. And again, I'm sorry that my camera freezes uh, from time to time. That's just the way it goes. Um, next week, that'll be solved. But uh, as, if you look back here, you can see the other cabinets do not have that feature. This is just one of those extra nice features in a kitchen that, um, you know, just add a little bit of, of, I don't know, detail, I guess, to the design and just bring it up maybe that little extra level. So the arch toe kick I thought was really, really cool and something that you may want to consider in your own kitchen uh, if you want to do something like that, if you like that particular style. It's a little... Um, more <laughs> fancy is the only word that comes to mind, but it's not the right word. All right. Something else that I love is the fact that there's lots of lights. So, or just a lot of light, not necessarily lots of light, but lots of light. So a great big window. If we just scroll back here, nice big window in this kitchen, you've got the lights over the island, of course. And whenever you are designing a kitchen, make sure that you really implement enough light for the tasks that you need to do and for the ambiance that you want to create in that space to uh, to make it nice and bright the way you want it. So here is, um, I've got different emojis for all these two, by the way. So this is the starry-eyed one. All right, the next one will be like this. This is just really, really important in every kitchen in that you have proper landing area. And on a wall like this, where you have the range and then countertops on each side. Sometimes people will try to squeeze that into an area where you don't get enough counter space. So you have to be careful. And sometimes there's no other way around this. However, in this kitchen, uh, they have a nice ample amount of uh, landing area around the range. And so this gives it a, a thumbs up for me for the kitchen design. And then the thing that I do not like about this kitchen is the dust. There's a little bit of of dust on those open shelves. It looks to me like dust, at least. Even if that's not dust and it's just the the, the way that looks, um, that will get dusty. And so be careful, of course, with anything that's that's open and just be aware that you do have to dust it and you do have to keep it clean in order for it to keep looking nice. Um, and of course, that's at your discretion. So this is the first one. 
this is how the rest of these are going to go. Three things that I love about these kitchens and one thing that I don't. All right, let's look at the next kitchen and you can have a look. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Well, now this is uh, obviously a kitchen that I would like because it's a white kitchen. And you know how I like about what I think about white kitchens. I love them. So this this is a, a very, you know, high-end looking space. Again, don't don't get thrown off by the fact that some of these are high-end looking. The idea is that you can take some key points away uh, into your own renovation, your own kitchen. So what do you like about this kitchen or what do you maybe hate about this kitchen? There might be multiple things you like or hate about any of these spaces. And uh, it's interesting to, to check this out. So here's the first thing that I love is that it just has a large island. I love large islands. And because this one has the sink in it, the bigger, the better, so that you can get all that counter space and all that prep and all that surface and all that social area accounted for in your kitchen. Look at the size of that thing. It's massive. Now with four stools, you could easily fit five in that because there's ample space between those stools to uh, have proper seating. So I love the biggest island possible in a kitchen when there's going to be an island. And um, But don't go too big that you're you know all messed up on your clearances. But when I see a great big island or when I can design a kitchen that has a nice, you know, big, big island, I love I love it. So nice, large island. Now, the next thing that I love about this kitchen with the starry eyes is just proper hinging on these doors. So this is something that comes up quite a lot when we look at these pictures of kitchens and something for you to keep in mind. And something that comes up for me a lot when I'm designing kitchens as well for clients is that when you are deciding on the hinge placements of doors and the way doors are going to be hinged, you want to make sure that it is the most functional uh, that it can be. And in the case of a range with two doors on either side of your head, basically, it's the best case scenario is that they would open out, you know, so that you can just reach in, not move your head around a door. This isn't always possible, but when it can be, it's a great design choice. And in a kitchen like this, it could have easily gone the other way just because someone really didn't check that detail or think about it. So this kitchen was really well designed in the fact that they really thought through that process to make sure those doors opened properly. And, you know, this is design 101, I, I guess, but you'd be surprised that, that this gets missed a lot um, and can get missed a lot, even, even by me sometimes if I'm just not thinking you have to really go through the design to make sure that everything's hinged properly. All right, here's a great thing uh, about this kitchen that I love is that the cabinets go to the ceiling. This is a high ceiling, but not high enough that it wouldn't warrant having cabinets go to the ceiling. Now, these particular ceiling heights and these particular types of cabinets are not things you're going to be into every day. Obviously, these are for what they're using it for glass door lights and you know whatever the the thing you want to put in there to see um and so you don't have to do it this way of course you can just have doors and you can store extra things up there that you want to store from time to time or sorry access from time to time on a stool or whatever it is you want to use but uh, what i really love about this is that they decided to finish it to the ceiling i think in a in a big grand kitchen this really makes it even you know more grand and it costs more grand more grands more money of course but really really nice i love the look of cabinets finished to the ceiling and what don't i like about this kitchen let's see oh yeah there just wasn't enough wow factor for me in this space this kitchen probably could have used i had to dig deep for this one too by the way because this is a really nice kitchen overall like whether you don't like white or not whatever your opinion is on that the the overall layout and, and the design of the kitchen is very well done but this kitchen could have really used just something that looked better than a chimney style range hood i'm sorry a nice big you know eye candy i hate that word but something like that Something that really stands out and sets this kitchen apart would have been um, something over the over the range, boxed in maybe a different color, maybe clad it with countertop color, maybe, you know, ship lapped or trimmed with hardwood or something that really set it apart. So that that was the only thing. But again, um, you know. This is a really, a really nice kitchen. Let's just go back real quick, have a quick look at it. So overall, so when you look at that kitchen, yeah, nice, nice big wow factor over that range would have been really, really nice. But uh, very good, very good design. And uh, 
I love it. Lots of lots of drawers and all kinds of stuff. I, I kept this to three and and one. Um, I guess I, I could have kept picking out things that I like. There's multiple things in all these kitchens, more than three things that, that, that they've done well. These are all really well designed kitchens for the most part they are. Um, but I wanted to, you know, just keep three. So if you see something that you really love or hate, put it in the, in the chat and um, we can we can discuss it or you guys can can hash that out there. All right, let's go to the next kitchen, kitchen number three, smaller little space. And of course, we're only looking at these kitchens from a particular angle and uh, we don't see the rest of the space, but we can get a pretty good idea about this kitchen. So here's a small kitchen. So uh, it's good to add some of these smaller um, kitchens into the mix so that uh, most of us, like a lot of us can relate to a smaller kitchen as opposed to a great big massive kitchen. So this here, here's a small one. And there's some things that I, I do really love. You'll be surprised, I think, at some of these, um, of some of these ones. All right, let's go to the first thing I love. Okay, no, no corner on the wall. Now, I'm saying this not because I don't like corner wall cabinets, though that's true. In this particular kitchen, they could have, because they do have the room to return the cabinets on that wall by the window and and do a corner wall but they didn't and i i like the fact that they didn't they didn't need to because it's although they have the room it's not really enough room it's going to be really really cramped really tight and i think they made the right decision now that's being weighed against the other thing from the other kitchen that i said is the right thing to do and that's having the door hinge the right way so there's a bit of a trade-off here but i'm going to say that they they didn't put the corner and i think it was a good decision in this kitchen and then there should be a conversation on whether or not that door could should be hinged, should be that those cabinets should be two cabinets that both hinge to the right or both open to the right so that it's a little more accessible. But then you have a center gable and you don't have the, you know, a, a, a wider cabinet. You still have basically the same amount of space except what you're losing for the center. So just something to keep in mind. I, I, I think they made the right decision overall on this one. And, um, so I'm going to stick with it. So I do love the fact that they did that. All right, here's the next one. <laughs> this is not something you see every day. They just have the proper height stools. Um, that uh, normally when you look at these pictures, the stools are way higher. And I don't know if you have, sorry, I have two cameras and I'm looking at the wrong one. If you have island seating that you have stools for, you'll notice that you might notice that your stools seem high. You're hunched over. It's not very comfortable. There's, the, this, I think this is the right height. So you can actually sit there and put your elbows on that countertop and not be be hunched over. So a little shorter stool height, I think, is a, a good idea when you're thinking about island seating. Um, and a lot of times you see them just really, really high. So that you're, you're, you're basically your thighs don't even fit, or not your thighs, but like your your quads, your legs don't fit between the stool and the countertop, depending on who you are, I guess. All right, let's go to the next thing I love. Okay, this is the one that might cause controversy, of course, but open shelves. Now, let me just clarify why I'm saying this, because there's a reason. Um, and it, it goes back to the corner. So let's just go back to the full kitchen picture, and I'll explain myself. So here you have um, this uh, one side of the window has the open shelves. The other side of the window has that wall cabinet. Now, because they they didn't return the wall cabinet to the window, um, it wouldn't make s it, well. It if you, in my opinion, at least, either not having any cabinet to the right or the open shelves keeps that open feel to it. If you put a cabinet there, it seems like it's just sitting there on its own and kind of stands out like a sore thumb. So I like the fact that they didn't do that. Now they went with the open shelves, which is fine. I think it works in this kitchen. Um, but you could have done nothing there, but you, obviously they need the place for the space or for the plates and the bowls and whatnot. So I think uh, in this particular case, it's a it's a worthwhile investment. And uh, of course, something you have to keep clean and all the rest of it. But I think it really fits into this particular kitchen. So that's why I went with that one. And what I didn't like about this kitchen... Look at that. Not 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 a corner cabinet. I actually think in this kitchen, a corner cabinet probably is your best option. It's hinged the wrong way. 
it, it shouldn't hinge so that it opens into the range. It should hinge away from the range. So, um, yeah, that, that just keep that in mind. Whenever you're putting in a corner base cabinet like this that has a lazy Susan in it and you have a, an appliance right next to it, open the don't open into the appliance, open out, away from the appliance. And of course, we talked about this before in other live streams and videos that if you have two appliances, for instance, a, ra a range and a dishwasher, then you're in trouble because you have to open it into one of those. And uh, I would suggest then open it into the dishwasher because generally the dishwasher sits in a little bit further. So, all right. Cool. Next one. Next kitchen. Kitchen number four. We're moving right along. This is a beautiful old kitchen. Look at it. Oh, very, very nice. Nice blue color. Do you like the blue? There's some particular things I like. This seems to be an older kitchen that was maybe refurbished a little bit, maybe painted a bit, um, but it has some older styling to it. But nice nonetheless. It's not a white kitchen, so you'll be happy about that, some of you. And uh, nice and bold and blue. All right, let's see what I... First thing I love about this kitchen is the symmetry. Uh, I love symmetry. It, it's not always necessary, but I do love it. Now, in this case, again, those uh, hinges or doors are hinged so that when you open them, you're, you're kind of... It's in your face. And... The problem is, is that you need a particular width in order for this to really work right. You need to be able to get three doors or two really wide doors. And these doors aren't wide enough. And so in that case, it's better to have one double wall cabinet than two singles. And this is something that you can discuss or think about for yourself if you're doing that. But generally speaking, uh, that's kind of, you know, I guess my rule. But yeah, just really nice symmetry on that wall. That's a kind of a focal point. For that kitchen and uh when you can get symmetry you can get it and i love it so the next thing i really love about this which you don't see very often but are these niche shelves and this is just an added touch for this space that um again it's not something that we see a lot of these days but it just adds to this particular kitchen this probably wouldn't work in your ultra modern or scandinavian style japan d whatever you know, minimalistic space, but it really, really fits into this kitchen and and adds, you know, to you know that maybe the the functional texture <laughs> of this kitchen. I'm just making up words. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, again, it's a shelf. It's by the range. It's a gas range. Doesn't look like it's been burnt at all, so I think that's fine. But just a, a cool added touch. I like it. So not not something for everybody. Um, but yeah. Pretty neat. Just something you don't see every day. So I thought, that's cool. All right. Here's the next thing I like. The bread box. Now, you're all saying that is an appliance garage. Nay, nay. It is a bread box. Originally, that's what they were used for, were bread boxes. Um, people never had appliance garages uh, because they never really had a lot of small appliances. But they had a lot of bread. And so they would make these to be bread boxes. Um of course, the person who owns this house probably thinks it's appliance garage. I highly doubt there's any bread in there, so we can call it an appliance garage as well. But uh, this is kind of a throwback to the old style of appliance garage slash bread box that um, used to be in kitchens in the you know 80s, maybe before. I'm not sure when they had started doing this, but I used to design kitchens with a lot of these. And the client would specifically ask for a bread box. So I'm sticking with it. Okay, here's what I don't like about it. This island has a weird shape and it creates this awkward seating so that your back is towards the oven. Just seems like it's not the best setup overall. Let me just scale out here and we'll look at the, the total thing here. Um, yeah, just an awkward awkward kind of placement you can kind of see the sink back there which seems to be in a in a weird location for some reason um so i'm just not a fan of that if you're going to put seating in your island make sure that it's it's not to the back of the kitchen it's here for some reason i'm not sure why obviously we don't see the rest of the home maybe they want to look out at something um but generally uh generally that's not a great idea keep it to the side or on this side where the drawers are, why couldn't you do it there? Um, but anyway, that's just something that I'm not um, 
I'm not fond of for this space. So love the bread box. All right. Okay, let's go to the next kitchen, kitchen number five. Another white kitchen. Ooh, with stainless and a different color island. Ooh, with those library pulls. Fun. <laughs> what do you think of this one? If this doesn't scream sterile, I don't know what does. Looks like a hospital. Can do surgery on that countertop. Let's go to the first thing I like about it. it does not it doesn't and it doesn't look like a hospital. I've never seen a hospital that beautiful before. <laughs> Vertical doors above the fridge. So you might not have noticed, but a few kitchens ago they had a similar vibe. And above the fridge did not have vertical doors. It had two doors. Want to go back there? I can take you back there real quick, just so I can show it to you. Let me just scale back here with my with my mouse here, and I'll see if I can find that one. Um, just because I want you to see the difference here, which I think is important. I think it's this one. Hold on. Okay. So just notice above this, the fridge, same fridge, um, same kind of vibe, but two doors that open out. Okay. Now, let's just go back to the one we're looking at, I think, which was, bear with me for a second. I think it's that one. All right. Yeah, now you have the vertical door. I like this touch. Now, here's the only problem with this is that when you open it, how do you close it? You need a coat hanger. What do you got to do? So you got to be careful of that. So if you're going to do something like this, this is either something you're not into every day. Obviously, it's above your fridge. Or these are on a servo drive so that they open in the, with a touch of a button, they close. It's a lot of money to spend on a 12-inch high cabinet. So I'm not sure that would be the best solution. But I do like this look quite a bit. So maybe if you're taller, it's a good idea. Or if you have a stool that you don't mind getting on. But uh, as opposed to the two doors, I think this visually looks more appealing. Here's the next thing I like, a microwave shelf. I think it's a great height for a microwave. It's not too high, like over the range uh, style. It's not in a base cabinet, which a lot of people find to be challenging because it's kind of low and it's not taking up counter space. So they put this one on a shelf. I think that's a, a pretty good idea. My two favorite places are basically on the countertop if you have the room for it because it's a really, really great height. But if you don't have enough counter space, then adding a cabinet like this, it's tucked against the wall and it fits into the rest of the kitchen layout. If you look back here, um, you know, done it in such a way that it's, it's not obtrusive. I like that idea. So, all right, here's the next thing that's a good thing to have, of course, is just counter space. This kitchen has a lot of counter space. And when you can get that, awesome. Sometimes you can't, so you have to get as much as you can and deal with it. But in a kitchen where you can have tons of it, then it's nice to see. And I like how they cleaned up this picture for or the kitchen for the picture because I doubt it looks this nice all the time. And something I don't like about this kitchen is, again, this range hood. Um, this could use something. This is better than the chimney style. So it's a step up. It could even be more if we would just go back to this kitchen. There's a lot of stainless happening here. You got the big stainless fridge. It almost looks like a mirror. You've got, you know, the, just, just the stainless lamp, uh, pendant lamps coming down. Um, so something that is maybe the color of the island, something just a little different above there to draw your eye and to say, oh, yes, this is this is where you want me to look at and to notice the symmetry and just be drawn into that. So I think they missed it there. But, it, you know, beautiful kitchen overall. All right, another white one. I didn't pick just white kitchens because I just, I literally just typed in functional kitchens and just picked, you know, dot, 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 and, and just went with it. And it was hard. I had to really try to find things that I didn't like about some of these. Okay. But it seems you guys are, are doing fine. Um, so that's good. Num kitchen number six. Beautiful space, another white kitchen. Have a look, here we go. Next thing I like about this is the extra storage on the back of the island. Of course, extra storage wherever you can get it is great. And the great thing about this placement is that it's just shallow depth. You don't need any extra pullouts or anything inside to make it accessible. It's already accessible by nature of being shallow. 
it's tucked away, yes, under the overhang, and there's a stool in the way. So it's not everyday stuff that you're going to be getting at, but many kitchens need just that extra place to put things that you need on special occasions and holidays and things like that when company comes over. So try to find places in your kitchen where you can utilize shallow storage, and it will definitely increase your functionality overall. All right. Here's something I love about this kitchen, it, the, just this detailing of the inlay. Um, really, really cool. I, I just think those extra touches really, um, really make a kitchen uh, stand out from other kitchens, I guess. So that is something I really thought was beautiful in this space and uh, framed out those base cabinets really well. And just that little high-end touch. I also love the backsplash, by the way, but I don't have that on the list. Uh, I do have under cabinet lighting. And of course, if you watch my lighting video last week, um, you will have uh, a little more to say about this and how they should be placed and um, the type of lights you can use there and how to angle them properly and diffuse them and overlap them and all that other kind of stuff. But having under cabinet lighting is really important in, in any kitchen that has wall cabinets because there's going to be an automatic shadow from the ceiling lights down on that counter space. And so the more lighting per task that you can have, the better. And so I love that in this kitchen, they do have ample lighting, lots of lighting everywhere, but they have that. It's not too, you'll notice in some kitchens that there's a, it's a real glary on the backsplash. So I think these ones probably, they look to be installed correctly um, or they have diffusers and uh, it's a really nice task lighting, but it's not, too hard in your eyes and doesn't cause a glare. So very, very nice. Here's what I don't like. They got this beautiful kitchen, that beautiful inlay, that beautiful backsplash. And you have this double sink in there. <laughs> what? what happened? Why are you doing this? Anyway. Put a large single sink in your kitchen. Stop it with this foolishness of the double sinks. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next kitchen before I get to kicked off of YouTube. Number seven is this kitchen. This is my favorite kitchen of all of these. Tiny little kitchen. But man, it, it's so beautiful. I just, whatever it is about it, I love it. So anyway. All right. But I did have to, I did have to find something that I didn't like. And that was challenging, but you'll see what it is in a minute. All right. Here's what I love. First off, this this perfect symmetry. So just, wow, it looks so beautiful. I just love it. I just love everything about it. So I just love the, the symmetry of this space. Um, obviously, you know, like I said before, I'm a big fan of symmetry in a kitchen. And um, this definitely fits the bill, especially for a small little space to be able to fine tune that detail in. I think it's excellent. I love this backsplash. I love a, a, a slab backsplash. I really do. And a uh, different color than the peninsula there, uh, which, is, which is a nice feature. And I'm not sure if that moves to reveal something behind. I don't think it does. I think it's there for some other reason. I, I'm not sure why. I don't know why it's like that on top. Um, it could slide, but I don't think it does. So it might just be a feature, but if you look at it, it's not perfectly centered. So I don't think it's a feature that way. I think they had to do it that way. Um, so yeah, because I, I can't see why it would slide unless it's revealing a, a hidden shelf, but the, they, they don't show that. So you think they'd show that, like a hidden niche shelf. All right. I love this flip up countertop. Really, really great. Um, you know, it's a small little kitchen. You need the extra stool. You need the extra place to sit. You can flip it up, flip it down. So it was really cool. I thought that was a great idea, great addition, something that you can add to your kitchen, you know, fairly, um, fairly easily if you have a small little space. And I don't like this. No, no, no vent. Now, is there a downdraft? I don't. I don't think so. It's really hard to tell. But I, I don't know. I don't think there's a downdraft. And even if there was, I'm still going to stick with this because I think downdrafts don't work great. So 
if you can get away with not having a downdraft, then do it. Um, so yeah, just that's gonna get that's gonna get pretty grimy up there. Anyway, but you know, aside from everything else, like I just really thought this was beautiful. I could just put that on a t-shirt and wear it. All right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> okay, let's go to this kitchen, number eight. Beautiful little space. And this is the kitchen that I have most things I don't like about it. In fact, there's multiple, multiple things I don't like about this kitchen. Um, and I had a really hard time figuring something that I liked about it. Uh, so have a quick look. But uh, there's a lot of a lot of problems in my opinion, which is, you know, that's just my opinion, of course. All right, let's go. The window spacing. So the window's a nice size for this space, but you just got those cabinets jammed up into it. And I don't think there's any need for that. When you are, there's a balance, okay? So when you're designing a kitchen, there is a balance and you need to balance your storage and the aesthetics and the layout and all that. Most people, I think, grossly overestimate the amount of storage they actually need. And I think most people, if they declutter their current kitchen and organize it, will realize that they have a whole lot more space than they realize they have because they're just not using it efficiently. And a lot of us are like that. So that being said, when you design a kitchen, maybe their old kitchen, they thought, well, I just don't have enough space for stuff and I just need to put as much cabinets and no wasted space. But, you know, honestly, it needs you need to create a little space around that window to let this kitchen breathe a little bit. Not, that would have helped first off. All right. These are my opinions, by the way. <laughs> uh, wall, 45 degree wall corners are the worst type of wall corner you can put in your kitchen. The only thing that makes this any better is if you actually have an 18 inch round wall corner lazy susan it's the only type of lazy susan that i endorse actually is in a cabinet exactly like this because you're able to the middle and top shelf and the bottom shelf rotate the lazy susan so you can get at what you need and in the event that something falls off the lazy susan which it will it's going to be on most likely the bottom shelf which you can easier easierly you can get at it better than, than the other ones. So I highly doubt this has something like that in it, and it's probably shelving, and they're very deep and hard to access. Your top wall, your top, you know, and your second shelf in a wall cabin are already hard enough, and so this is just even worse. So I don't like that. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you here. I don't care about panels on dishwashers or fridges. I'm a North American. And so I don't mind seeing stainless steel. In fact, I like it. However, in this kitchen, I think they should have paneled this because of its placement in this kitchen. Unfortunately, if you put it on the corner on the other side, that's not the greatest spot either. There is no real great spot. So I, this is wrong, but they don't have much options in this kitchen. And so they have to put it somewhere. If you put it on the 90 degree on the other corner and leave some space, maybe there could be plumbing issues. There could be reasons why you can't do that. So, okay, it has to be there. It is what it is. Put a panel on that thing so it just, it at least doesn't like throw your eye down to it because of its just awkwardness. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> and the one thing I like about this kitchen is the ambient light. So I don't like their under cabinet lighting choice because there's just a big glare on three or four inches of backsplash. And it, I don't know, it looks like rocket ship blasting off. But I do like the ambient light in this, in this kitchen. So I, it took me time. Actually, I like the flooring as well. <laughs> so I like the flooring. Um, in this space, but yeah. And I, I, you know what, this is someone's kitchen, so I'm not 
being mean. I'm just telling you what I think. So that's what I think about it. Here's the ninth kitchen that we're going to take a look at tonight. And uh, this is an interesting one. Um, lots of color going on. There's a nice, nice detail uh, behind the range. And so let's have a look at this. Beautiful space, by the way. This is one of my favorites. My second favorite kitchen overall. There's only one thing that I really dislike about this space. And uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I love the symmetry of this wall. Now, when you have an l shape kitchen and you're trying to create symmetry on a wall cabinet on, on one of those walls, you have a problem because base cabinets are deeper than wall cabinets. And so what that means is, is the you have this space that you have to deal with on either side in order to create this. And what they did here was they put this cabinet to the um, down to the countertop. It's 24 inches deep. You can see it's as deep as the uh, the the base cabinets. And they put these the open shelf and the apothecary drawers there or whatever. And and then that enables them to create this symmetrical look. Now it's not symmetrical with the base in terms of the actual cabinet sizes because they have that corner uh, cabinet door and then they have their base cabinet door uh, and drawer fronts. But that doesn't matter when you're creating symmetry. It doesn't have to be top and bottom. It just needs to be normally wall cabinets is the most important thing because everything else is really blocked from view. So if you're trying to create symmetry in your kitchen, don't try to match kitchen cabinet sizes top and bottom because you'll drive yourself bananas trying to do that unless it's a, a one wall kitchen where you you know you might have a chance. But on an L shape, you, it's going to be very it, it's going to be very challenging and not necessary. So this is the way to do it. And they did a really great job of doing that to center that uh, in that space and make it look like it's not offset because it actually is offset. The range is not in the center of that wall, but it looks like it is because of the way they designed it. So very, very, very nice. I love the way they did that. I love the two DWs, the two dishwashers in this kitchen. Every kitchen needs two dishwashers. <laughs> um, and some need three. So yeah, you know, obviously, I don't know how many of you have two dishwashers. I certainly don't. I would love to have two. I'd love to have the space to have two, but I don't have the space. Uh, so if you can have the space, put in two dishwashers and just call it a day. I think it's a really great idea because the option is just have a cabinet. And is a cabinet better than a dishwasher? Maybe, but probably not because it can act as a cabinet anyway. Plus it washes, washes whatever's inside there. Here's what I love. This big window. This may be just something that's part of the architecture of the home. But if you are building a home or have the option to change your window during a renovation, try to get a, a little bit of a bigger window if you can, if it makes sense, if it's in the budget, if you can fit it into the design. And um, yeah, I, I, to me, that it brings in so much light. It's just beautiful. It's not all crammed with wall cabinets. You're able to have this one feature wall with the range that, that's you know done. And then you have this beautiful window section, which I think is absolutely fabulous. And I don't know why they didn't finish that to the ceiling. There's probably a reason, but I don't know what it would be. And so I think uh, they missed it there. They they should have just finished those right to the ceiling. Um, I don't know. So... I'm crying. Cry emoji for not doing that. But overall, a very, very beautiful space. I love the colors. And I'm not sure if... I mean, it looks like the color fades up like it's it's a gradient. Is that, is that real or is that some kind of like reflection? Something tells me it's probably a reflection. To get that gradient on your cabinets would be intense. Anyway, very nice. All right, number 10. This is the last kitchen that we're going to look at. Things I love and hate about kitchens and their designs. This is a very modern looking space with a nice touch of natural wood to really bring in some of that warmth that wood provides. All right, have a look. Very nice. All right, I love this layered look in the island. So if we just go back to this picture here. Um, so it just looks like it, it looks like it goes right through. And I, you know, obviously it doesn't, um, but it, it looks like it does. And I think, uh, I shouldn't say, 
I don't know if it does or not. I doubt it does. It would be a nice feature on the front of that if uh, it had that band going through, but I, I doubt it does. Really nice look. I like the look of that. I like the look of it. I'm not a fan of a lowered lunch counter, by the way. Unless you're doing it different, like this. This is nice, and I think they can they can get away with it. All right, I love the drawers. Um, simple one, of course, not not elaborate, but um, you got to have the more drawers the better, generally speaking. And we talk about this all the time. Drawers first. Second to that would be cabinets with pullouts. Second to that would just be drawers. <laughs> like just get as much access in your kitchen as possible. And so sometimes in these spaces, they'll try to put a, a narrow cabinet and then a, another narrow cabinet with drawers. But wider drawers are usually better than shallower drawers when they're if they're deeper. So if you have a shallow drawer bank or narrower drawer bank, you, I would prefer more drawers, like four, or maybe even five, but four. And then if you had something wider, you'd get away with, you know, two, three, and you can still do four if you wanted to. But um, the wider you go, the deeper, it's more con convenient, more functional. And uh, the shout, the narrower, if you go deeper, it's not that functional. All right. Here's what I like that I thought they did really well was just, and, and, and this is, you know, this isn't just not something I like about the kitchen. I wanted to point this out because I want to make sure that I mention this is that, um, just think about your your fridge spacing that you need to open doors and where that thing is placed. And this is a, a you know a tip that that's out there. I've, I've said it for a long time. We all all the kitchen designers say the same thing. The manual of the fridge says the same thing. Wherever you go to get your kitchen designed or whoever designs the kitchen, they'll likely do this. But I guarantee you, everyone who's designed a kitchen has messed this up at some point in their life. And if you're starting off in the kitchen design business and you haven't done this yet, email me when you do, because you will. It you, This will happen. You will forget about the spacing. So I want to remind you, if you're doing this yourself, if you're working with a designer, be very clear on making sure that fridge fits and the doors can open. Because if not, it is a major pain when that fridge comes to be put in place and you're like, uh, it doesn't fit. Uh, what do we do? The sink is too small. Cry face emoji. <laughs> I love a single sink, but not a tiny one. Put a bigger sink in there. Come on. Like in the kitchen like this, you have the space. There's no other sink. Why not put in a big, a bigger sink? Um, you know, they, they missed the boat on that. Put a big, large double sink in there. I think you could have done, they could have done a little bit better. Well, there you go. There you have it. Those are the things that I love and hate about those spaces. And I thought it's interesting to look at some of that stuff because we can get an idea. For me, it's an exercise in figuring out, you know, is there something that could have been done better or something I never thought about? And there's a lot of that that happens when I look at these kitchens. Whenever I look at it, it's like, oh, wow, there's, there's, I never, I wouldn't have thought of to do that. And I love when that happens because then I can take that you know, catalog it in my brain somewhere. And then when it comes up sometime, I'll be able to implement that into a design or the way I think about the way a kitchen is laid out. And so uh, that's what I really love about, you know, looking at some of these kitchens. And I know that sometimes when we're looking at these spaces, they seem like, well, these are really elaborate. But again, it's it's the overall ideas that you can you can take from this and apply to your own kitchen design. So Awesome. So that was the last one. Let's take a few minutes and chat. I, I totally never looked at any of the um, the chat feed tonight yet, but I hope you're all having a great night. Of course, if you're watching this um, in replay, the rest of this is just me chatting. And um, so you can you can stick around if you want. Uh, leave a comment, please. And um, make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel. If you like my content, if you don't, don't subscribe. But if you do like it, you want to watch more. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and I post videos every week and live streams every Wednesday night. So, and I try to be as helpful as possible in my content. So I hope that you found this valuable in some way, shape or form. And um, yeah, that's good. But uh, is there any questions? And of course, I, I haven't been looking. So if you do have a question about anything or a comment you want me to comment on, put it in the chat now. And uh, 
we will get at it. But otherwise, um, I don't know if anyone's seen my lighting video on Saturday. If not, go ahead and check that out when you get a chance, if it comes up on your feed. Um, because I uh, covered quite a bit in there. I thought it was a pretty good thing to talk about. Lighting in the kitchen comes up a lot. And um, yeah, so. And check out Michael's video too, Kitchen Cider. Uh, 20 tips in 10 minutes. Just rock solid tips on kitchen design for 10 minutes. Straight and to the point, really good video. So if you haven't seen his video yet, uh, he just he just put it out. But definitely go check it out. Um, it's it's just you know he just hits he hits them all, bang 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 bang. So I love it. Uh, how about we send in pics of our kitchens for a critique? <laughs> yeah, you could do that. So I was chatting with someone this week um, in the kitchen design business. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, oh, my bad. And um, anyway, they might come on and, and talk about some of their designs. We can go through them. A couple of people, actually, I was chatting with. Uh, a lot of interesting things coming up. So hopefully we could do something like that. But you can certainly send me pictures. I'd like to have enough people do it that we can make a good live stream out of it. So if you wanted to do that, please do so. Um, that would be cool. Recommendation window should be at least eight. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it just gives it a good, gives it a good size. Of course, you know, ultimately that's a minimum. I think, I think really the bigger, the better, um, you know, in, in terms of the window, as long as you have enough storage and all the other stuff, but the bigger, the bigger window, the better. Helen, we're getting ready to buy a Frigidaire induction cooktop. Turns out they have class action lawsuit because the auto size burnt, the auto size do not work as advertised. Oh, well, that's no fun. Back to electric. Strike a new kitchen at the moment. We want a handleless look. We thought the drawer depth in terms of height would be fine, but none of our pots fit because of the shallow line, not J pole. Any fixes because we got shadow line J. Oh, sh shadow line, not J pole. Your your pots don't fit because of the drawer depth, but the height of the drawer. We thought the drawer depth in terms of height would be fine. Yeah, that's that's. That's a hard one. Um, I, I don't. I don't just have a fix off the top of my head, but I will say, just as people who are looking to, if you're looking to, when you're designing kitchens, um, th this is why you really do want to measure the the height of the things that you own and where they're going to go. People don't like doing that. I'm not saying you didn't do this or didn't want to do it, but a lot of people I talk to, or I did get the impression like you don't want to measure everything but really it's a good idea but i mean this is a different thing um the drawer height is short because of the, the shadow line yeah that's uh brutal the shadow line looks beautiful <laughs> but now you you can't fit stuff in there um i can't think of a fix off the top of my head other than you know you changing your drawer fronts which is obviously not going to be something you're going to do Hmm. That's that's not good. If anyone, if someone else has uh, an answer for that, I really don't. I really don't have a fix. I can tell you on that one. Vonda, I have my first final walkthrough. Ooh, six months. Congratulations! You're finally getting to the end of it, which is great. What's the title? I can't see it on Facebook. Michael, the title is Three Things I Love and One Thing I Hate About These Kitchens. So I figured that that's enough, that's enough of a description. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what it was. All right, what else do we have? Uh, I don't know. Helen, how you doing? I will have to make a few changes to my apartment's kitchen, but cannot move until February. Ooh, that's too young. Oh, 
cool, cool, cool. I seen just a blip earlier. You said you're selling your property. Is this true? Um, I'm not sure where that's at now. James, hey man, thanks so much. Appreciate you being on. It's awesome you can join a live stream. And for anyone else who is new to the live stream, thanks for being here, of course. We're just kind of chatting now and I'm I'm just uh kind of scrolling through the uh the chat feed here. Anyway, Helen, I thought you said you were selling, so that's uh all the best with that for sure. Just tuning in. What was the thing you hate open shelves? Actually, Mike, uh, in the kitchen that had the open shelves, one of the things I liked about it was the open shelves. But you'll have to watch the reasoning why I said that. Everyone else knows who watched it, but you'll have to just wait and see. There's a reason. Do you have advice to launch a kitchen fitting business? That's a great question. Um So you want to install kitchens. I guess the question would be, Phil, um, are you designing, um, selling the product and installing them? If you're just wanting to install them, fit the kitchens, then um, there's. I guess there's different advice if you're going to be also selling the product and or doing the design service. But if you're just doing the kitchen installation, I would just canvas, you know, as many, like a lot, a lot of people, what they do, a lot of guys um, or installers will go to like, like say Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, the local, you know, provincial state, whatever, you know, big box store, the, the, the smaller ones, they'll go to all these places, all these kitchen shops and, you know, and just basically look to become installers for these places, Ikea, any place like that. And you can really, usually these places will, will subcontract out, uh, kitchen installers where I worked for a long, long time. That's what we did. We just had a, a separate, you know, group of installers that were, they were their own company. And we just hired them and, and they did work and they worked really close to us. So, or with us. So um, that's one way to do it, just to get out there, to start getting installs. Because if you just are starting off and nobody knows who you are and you, you just want to go and start installing kitchens, you have to have, it's better if you have a designer or a company that's like, here's our installer and, and you're working for them. So that's a great way to do it. You can still work for yourself. You still have your own separate business. And then you're just, you know, you're you're just through the installation services of one of these places, they will hire and 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 hire out you. You know, like Home Depot does this, uh, Lowe's would do this. So most of these companies, this is how they do it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, other than that, like I would say, depending on where you're at, too, is just be on, you know, cr start creating content and get your 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 likeness, your face out there. And, um, you know, whether that's through Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, wherever it is, LinkedIn, just start creating content so that you can, um, you know, see people can see you and see what you do and, and get a name for yourself that way. Um, of course, if you're this and you can post ads, you can buy ad space for specific territories like on Google, you can you can buy ads for your community or your province, state area you know, municipality, you can, you can buy ads for, just so that people, when they're watching YouTube, the ad will come up for you because they live in that area. So that's something you can do as well. Um, so I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, oh, some design in Ikea too. Yeah. Well, I'd go right to Ikea and ask them and then I would um, definitely to include some content if you can't do content that's fine um if if, if but if you're going to do design um it, you know if it's going to be a brick and mortar store then you're going to have to um i think content is just the the the, the game is going to be played in the content field for sure so people can know who you are and see you and and, and say oh that's the, that's the guy from 
wherever YouTube. And yeah, I, I've, I've seen him and, and then they, you can make a name for yourself that way too. And then people trust you and then they'll, they can, but you'll, they'll buy your design services. That's the short, very short version of that. Here we go. Sort of Helen. Yeah. You're selling huge change for me. Ooh, overseas travel overseas to Canada, maybe. Can you look at form kitchen website? I've looked at form before. They are beautiful. Yeah. I might do those guys in another video where I look at some of these, um, some other little higher end RTA companies. Form's great though. Yeah. Do you use full extension sliders on wide drawers? Yeah, I do. I do. I use Bloom tandem undermount rail system, 36 inch wide drawer bank, you know, deep, a deep drawer bank. Um, they each have a hundred pound test. So depending on who you are, you could stand in that drawer uh, and you'll be fine. So yeah, full extension and undermount, I think is definitely the way to go, but I do on, on, on full. All right. Mm. Ryan saying, Phil, get a line laser, high quality tool set, track saw. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you want to, if you're going to install kitchens, you want to have the right gear. Get a, a cabinet lift if you can. So if you're doing it by yourself, you can hold a wall cabinet in place without having to hold it with a hand on the wall and trying to screw it in. Um, yeah. Get all the right tools. Uh, what are the standard heights for drawers? So a deep drawer bank. A deep drawer, the box is usually eight inches, and a shallow drawer, the box is usually four inches, though it can be more or less than that. And the 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 actual height of the drawer fronts uh, kind of varies from company to company. I like to have if it's a three drawer bank, I have two equal and one one shallow, and I think they're about. Uh, I can't. I, I'd have to do the math, but I don't know it off the top of my head, but. I'd say they're about 12, about 12 inch high. Um, seems to be about right. But but the box itself is about eight inches. Um, but I don't know if those are standard. Uh, like other companies might have different heights than that. <laughs> the old rocket ship cabinets, they did look like rocket ships. Um, what do you consider doing oh, you, oh, on historic houses? It is in historic houses. I have an 1800s cottage. Cool. Yeah, I, I uh, that would be interesting to look at. I don't want to kill the vibe of the house. That's interesting. Yeah, it's something we can we can probably look at for sure. Something those older older unique homes are really nice. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Helen, you're too late. I sold the place. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but you, you can come hang out with Amy and I for sure at the house. I'd love to have you. All right. Oh, isn't okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Helen, you got an older place. So there you go. So it's probably some definitely we can probably look at. Pro tip install cabinets before, install wall cabinets before base cabinets. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> Ooh, here, Matthew, you'll like this one. Wood cabinets versus plywood with a laminate, which is better. Um, this is a matter of opinion. I think it, it, it you know, I, I do have to say that I, I probably would agree that a wood cabinet is better overall than... Uh, something that's laminated though I will say that just because it's laminated doesn't mean you don't have dimensional strength in fact particle board dimensional strength is greater than than like plywood so uh, just if it gets wet it's going to be a problem so I don't know if one is better enough that it's like, yes, you definitely have to have that to make or break a kitchen. 
I really think what you're paying for a solid wood cabinet, you know, I don't know if you're getting that return necessarily out of the function and use. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. All right. Hey, hey, Ashlyn. Wondering if you have a recommendation for custom door fronts for Ikea cabinets. I've looked at semi handmade, but their prices are wild. I'm just looking for wooden slab style cabinets. Have you tried Kitsch? Um, I think it's Kitsch is the website. Hold on, let me just Google it real quickly here on my other screen. Just bear with me, I'll look it up real quick. I think it's Kitsch. Now, what is the name of it? Not Kitsch, it's a cabinet company. Um, I guess I'm, I mean, semi handmade is just the, the one that's the most known. Um, hold on, what is it called? Let me do this semi handmade. Sorry, everybody. All right, reform. There's a company called Reform. Neu. I don't really. I'm not that super familiar with any of them, to be honest with you. Um, but I do, and I've heard that semi handmade is pretty expensive. But um, there's one. I th it's Kitsch something. But gosh, I can't even remember. If I think of it, I'll maybe throw it in a comment and pin it later. But I, I just don't know the name of it. If someone knows it, pl please put it in the in the chat, or if you can kind of Google it real quick. It, I believe it's a Canadian company. So if you're in Canada, this would be an option probably. And and cabinet, my kitsch? No, I'm not sure. Uh, there are other door companies, of course. You, you could literally go to any, any kitchen cabinet shop and buy doors from them. Just give them the sizes. But the problem with that is that these companies that specialize in Ikea doors, everything's drilled where they need to be. And they're all the right sizes already. So it just takes out a lot of of work on your, you know, your end to try to figure all that out. But it, you could do it that way as well. So if so you could probably get it cheaper, but it's dangerous because you could get things drilled wrong. So keep that in mind. But I'm not sure the, the company. So anyway, someone might put it in the in the chat. I haven't seen it yet. All right. Uh, da -dun -dun -dun. Yeah, Filson Kitsch. Okay, I th I'm pretty sure it was Kitsch. So, um, yeah, check check them out if you're in Canada. I think, and I think they're in Canada. Yeah, the the ones I used were called My Front and Center, and they were great. Uh, they're in the United States. So if you live in the United States, which many of you do, um, they're, they're a great company for kitchen doors, but, but they're, they're not specific to Ikea cabinet sizes. And so you have to do that grunt work beforehand. And I was, I did that for the cabinets I bought, but I was comfortable in doing that because I'm just comfortable in doing it that, but, and they'll work with you to make sure they get it. You get it right. It's just a little more, maybe scary for someone who's not used to doing that. Well, you're here now. That's fine. We'll forgive you. <laughs> Hit the like button. All right. All right. All right. All right. Got to get the likes up. Hit the like button. All right. Uh, Ashton, I'm planning on reaching out to some local contractors to see what cabinet grade plywood with walnut veneer and edge bedding would run me. Cabinet grade plywood with walnut veneer and edge banding. You put the word walnut in there and you just drove the price up. I bought pre assembled cabinets from the RTA store. How's that for irony? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Pre assembled from the RTA store. For those of you who don't get it, ready-to-assemble cabinets are not pre-assembled. So I noticed that they do that, though, which is, I guess that's good. They're P-T-A cabinets. No, 
I don't know what they're called. Jackie Sainz Co Coquina does Ikea doors in Oregon. Okay. Mike, what are you saying, man? If you could have world peace or go back in time to get rid of the guy who made OTRs, how would you get rid of him? <laughs> um, well, that would make a good video. <laughs> Whoever thought of that? Crazy idea. Sorry, Jackie. Sorry. I know. I know. I harp on the OTR as well. It is what it is. Um, you know, there's there's people who love their OTRs, and then there's the rest of us. So that's a great, great comment. Listen, everyone, thanks so much for being here. I'm going to sign off now. But if you've been watching this to this point in time, you're a superstar in my books because we get to hang out together. And I hope that I was able to answer some of your questions. But uh, if you have something specific that you want to ask me, uh, please put in a comment or email me. My email, of course, I will put it on the screen before I go. Um, I love to uh, to answer questions if I can. Um, comments, I don't get to answer all of them, of course, because I do get quite a bit of comments, which is great. Uh, so please comment. I do read them and uh, try to at least heart all of them and reply to some that I can. Uh, but if a specific question that you want answered about something, please drop it in an email and I'll try to help you out for sure. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we can get together and go through the details of your specific kitchen um you can do that too there's a link below for that all right everyone listen it's been a blast we'll see you next wednesday uh this is easter weekend of course so have a, a nice uh, easter weekend and um so that's really cool and if you are have vacation time and stuff like that i hope you enjoy it with your family and just have a super blessed weekend uh, we'll see you again on next week and this week's video on saturday we're talking about six countertops that are not quartz that do not have crystalline silica so we're going to chat about that helen so, solid surfaces in there so spoiler alert all right bye everyone god bless